Hello friends. Today our topic is segregation of asphalt mix and what are the possible causes and remedies. Segregation is the physical or thermal non-uniformity of an asphalt mixture. Segregation is a construction defect and it is detrimental to the performance of the pavement. Physical segregation is simply a non-uniform distribution of aggregate particles within an asphalt mixture. Areas of mixed placed with concentrations of larger particles will have larger air voids after compaction which are likely to be interconnected causing the compacted mat to be permeable. Thermal segregation is not identifiable without infrared monitoring and therefore it will often go unnoticed. Thermally segregated mix can meet mixed design parameters but suffer from thermal differentials within a freshly placed mat that results in non-uniform and poor compaction. And normally segregation is typically understood by the engineers to be physical segregation and therefore today our focus is on the physical segregation only. Why does segregation occur? The ratio of weight to surface area of a large aggregate particle is greater than that of a small aggregate and therefore large aggregate tend to be more prone to migrate away from the mass. And this migration of aggregate is typically the result of gravitational forces while the aggregate is in motion. Therefore physical segregation occurs when aggregates are being stockpiled and the larger aggregates tum tumble down the outside of the pile leaving the smaller aggregates behind. Somewhat similar behavior occurs when a mix is dropped in the storage silos, in truck loading and unloading and in the paving machine when the mix is being pushed forward without confinement. And these activities allow the largest aggregate in the mix even while coated with binder to migrate and that causes the segregation of the mix. What are the consequences of segregation? Physical and thermal segregation result in reduced density, higher percent air wires and mat permeability and it is because of weaker aggregate structure and gradation, weaker mix and that result in higher air wires. Air and water intrusion will cause disintegration of the compacted mix and with, the and with time this results in early payment failure. As a thumb rule, 1% increase in air wires above 7% would result in minimum 10% reduction in payment life. There are 4 or 5 locations where this segregate, segregation can originate. Aggregate handling, mix production, mix storage, trucking and lay down. Some mixes are more prone to segregation than others. And asphalt mixes that have large size coarse aggregate or have low asphalt binder content or are gap graded will tend to segregate more than a dense graded mix containing high asphalt content and smaller size coarse aggregate. Physical segregation can be seen in different types and these are five types which are commonly observed. Number one, Chevron shaped spots at the beginning and end of the truck loads, center of paver streaks, edge segregation, continuous longitudinal streak at either or both sides of the lane and random spots that occur intermittently throughout the roadway. Recognizing the type of segregation will make it easy to identify its causes. The first one is end of truck segregation and this type of segregation can occur at regular intervals coinciding with the beginning and end of each truck load discharge cycle. If the trucks are improperly loaded and unloaded, a segregation prawn mix will segregate when the mix starts being unloaded and then again when the last amount of mix comes out of the truck bed. It can be seen as a regularly spaced repetition of segregated areas down the road like this. It usually appears as a pattern of chevron shaped patches. The length of the pattern is the distance that one truck load of material will pave. 
It is most common with large stone mixes that have aggregate 19 mm or larger. Truck and segregation can occur due to several reasons, but the most important is improper loading of the whole truck from the silo. If the mix is placed in the truck bed in one drop from the silo, the coarse aggregate particles in the mix tend to run to both the front of the bed and the back tailgate. And this rolling of the coarse aggregate is aggravated if the plant operator continuously opens and closes the silo gates near the end of the truck loading procedure to ensure that the full allowable weight of the mix is placed on the truck. Segregation occurring along the side of the truck bed during loading translates to the paver when unloading into the paver hopper. Segregated materials or material tripling into the hopper at the outer box edge will accumulate in the outer area of the hopper wings and all these segregation locations will aggravate segregated mat areas behind the paver when the hopper wings are folded between every load. The second is center line segregation and it is caused by the gear assembly that powers the augers. When placed too low, the augers and gear assembly may not provide enough clearance for the mix to counterflow to the center of the mat being placed. And the result will be an insufficient segregated mix in the center of the mat. When this occurs, the solution is to raise the auger gear assembly to give more clearance for the mix to flow to the center. There are three main causes of center line segregation. The first is conveyor speed is too high. High conveyor speed often means that large aggregate is pulled away from the mix as it rubs the side guards along the conveyor. The second is auger speed is too low. High conveyor speed usually means low auger speed and the large aggregate roll into the dead area under the center chain case. And the third is absence of anti-segregation kit. I mean guards and deflectors at the ends of the left and right conveyors. This anti-segregation kit should be inspected frequently to make sure it has not been damaged or is not badly worn. The third is joint and edge segregation. When the mix is not confined properly at the outer ends of the screed, then this type of segregation is observed. Joint segregation can also occur when the rakers make corrections near the joint. Recommendations are to overlap the joint approximately one inch and let the roller compact this overlap down without raking or luting the overlap. Any crushed aggregate will soon weather away. If the mix is pushed forward without auger extension, the vertical segregation may also occur. Vertical segregation is invisible on the surface, but cores will show the larger particle at the bottom of the lift and fine particles at the top. Fourth is continuous longitudinal streaks. And it can occur due to several reasons. The first reason is that one or both augers were provided insufficient mix. To avoid that, the mix should always be held close to the axle of the augers and at an even height across the over chamber. The second reason is that the mix is improperly loaded into the hall truck. If the mix is not loaded in the center of the width of the truck bed, the coarse aggregate particles in the mix may roll to one side of the truck bed and accumulate along that side. And when the mix is delivered to the paver hopper, the segregated mix will be placed on the roadway along the same side and the segregation will appear as a longitudinal streak on one side of the paver only. And the third reason is that the mix was improperly loaded into the silo. When the silo is emptied, the coarse aggregate is deposited only on one side of the truck. Now this segregated material then passes through the paver and is seen on one side of the mix after lay down. Further, if the truck is not loaded in the center of its width under the silo, 
Lowering of the coarse aggregate particles may occur and longitudinal segregation can appear on one side of the mat. And the last is the random segregation. Random segregation is uneven distribution of aggregate sizes within the pavement layers creating area with high concentration of coarse aggregate and area with higher concentration of fines. This occurs when different sized aggregates separate during the production, hauling or placement of the asphalt mixture. Now this random segregation is different from the four types. Random segregation typically originates at one or a combination of locations upstream from the trucking and paving operation. It is less easy to identify in the mat because of its randomness, in part due to remixing opportunities. Segregated rock pockets are generally caused by improper handling of the aggregate in the stock piles or cold feed bins or improper storage of the HMA at the asphalt plant. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. If you have questions, you can write in the comment box.